it's never a good situation when you're out on the road and you have a flat tire. You have to pull over somehow and put on your spare. But there are some things you can do and some preparations you can make to make that whole process safer and go faster. But why did we decide to make this video in the first place, Donna? Because it happened to us. Yeah. And we were driving home from Nashville a couple months ago, and it was not fun. We were on the interstate. We ran over something and we heard a thump. And then I yelled, what was that? And you said... I don't know. I didn't see anything. We kept driving okay for a bit. You started to go, uh-oh. And I was like, what is, what is uh-oh while you're driving mean? N nothing good. The warning light on the dashboard came on or tire pressure. It said low tire pressure. And then it came up low pressure right rear tire. And it said like eight pounds of pressure. That's really low. And at this point, you were like driving slower. And I was like, what is going on? So then you put your flashers on the minute you started doing that. Because I, it all happened really fast. Then I just concentrated on getting off the road. So I checked my mirrors, the rearview mirror, the side mirrors, saw there was an opening. And I got over to the right shoulder as quickly and as safely as I could. So it could have been a lot worse. Yeah. What we had to deal with was we were beside a busy interstate, cars going fast, the sun was going down, it was dusk, and we had to make sure we had everything we needed to change the tire and stay safe. Anyway, we learned a lot from that experience. We found out we were prepared in some ways and not prepared in others. So it helped us, and through helping us, now hopefully we can help you. We want to help you guys. Yeah. Because I felt like... It was almost like we needed to share it with you guys so that you don't fall victim for like an accident only after just having just a flat. Because those things, like other drivers, you have no control over. We'll show you some of the things we used that made it safer for us. And even Donna was involved in making that safer for us and for me changing the tire. There was some things though in his tire changing emergency kit. Well, I guess it was like a more emergency roadside kit that you had that really came in handy, like the flashers. That was like immediate that he thought of, or if you had orange cones to put out to kind of warn people ahead of time. If you have a flat tire at night, you need some way to make other vehicles see you. For that, you can get some regular road flares that you strike and light, and they burn for 15 or 30 minutes or however long they're rated. I have some of those. You can also get flashing LED electronic road flares. These are either battery operated or they're rechargeable. Reflective triangles are good because when other drivers pass, their headlights will make these triangles show up very brightly. I just happen to be wearing an orange t-shirt that day, which is weird. <laughs> Because, Perfect like, color. all of the road personnel that you see in construction sites, they always have either an orange vest or an orange t-shirt on. And so orange is, like, the color of, I guess, to make people recognize or someone right here don't hit them. So I was thankful that I wore that shirt that day. And then, um, oh, the other thing was I had my walking stick with me. <laughs> so I was kind of trying to attract attention to get people to move into the next lane so they just wouldn't be so close to the car. But because she was standing there moving her stick around and kind of going like that, people saw that and noticed that a little ways ahead. So I think that helped. And for your own safety while you're out by the side of the road changing a tire, you should get a reflective vest of some kind. The one I have cost about $16 at Walmart. If you have a flat tire during the daytime, you also need something to alert other drivers to the fact that you're stopped by the side of the road and not moving. For that, you can use orange safety cones. You can also use the triangle reflectors. You also want to wear the safety vest. And be sure you get one that is a bright color that's very visible in the daytime and is also reflective for nighttime use. Let's say my car here is on the right shoulder of a two-lane interstate with both lanes going in the same direction. When you're placing your flares, triangles, or cones along the side of the road, you want to spread them out so that they give approaching drivers an early warning that you're stopped up ahead. It's good to use three markers of some kind. Placed at 10 feet, 100 feet, and 200 feet behind your vehicle. That roughly relates to 8, 80, and 160 walking steps behind where you're parked. I have three cones, so I'm going to place my first marker 10 feet 
eight steps behind my car and even with the side of it that is next to the roadway which is on the left. I keep counting my steps and place the next cone about 100 feet 80 steps back and line it up with the middle of my vehicle and I walk 80 more steps to place the last cone about 200 feet back and also line it up with the middle of my car. This forms an angled visual indicator that lets drivers know they need to keep to the left to avoid my vehicle. If you don't have three markers, use whatever you have by placing them spaced out behind you to warn oncoming drivers that you're stopped. And the distances don't have to be exact. Placing any safety markers somewhere behind your vehicle will only help. I have some wheel chocks, or also known as wheel blocks. They at least get two and place one in front and one in back of the tire that's on the opposite axle and is diagonal from the flat tire. But if you're stopped on an incline, place one block on the downward side of both tires that are on the axle opposite the flat tire. But it just so happened, just my luck, that where we pulled over, right by the tire, the right rear tire that was flat, there was a big nest of fire ants. And as soon as I kneeled down to check the tire and look to where to place the jack, I was getting bit. Oh my gosh, I bet there was like at least 30 to 40 ants on his back that I was brushing off of his back so they wouldn't bite, keep biting him. I had bites on my that legs and arms and up my neck. So it made me work a little faster, I think. <laughs> that had never happened to us when changing a tire. I've never heard of that happening to anybody either, but I'm sure it has. But I wished I'd had a mat at that point to put down that would have kept the bugs off and it would have protected my knees. I keep a mat and a rug in my trunk also. These are for kneeling on when changing a tire because often when you pull over to the side of the road to change your tire, it's dirty, it's rocky, it could be muddy, it could be wet, and a mat or a rug can make changing a tire a lot more comfortable and it can make it easier on your knees. Normally I would use the small throw rug to kneel down on, but if it's raining or snowing, I would use the mat instead. You want a flashlight in case you do have a flat at nighttime. Preferably get one that can be stood up and pointed at your work area or one like I have that has a magnetic base and you can attach that to the side of your vehicle and point it to where you're working. I make sure I have spare batteries for the flashlight for my battery operated electronic flares and I keep those batteries sealed in a Ziploc bag. I keep a rain poncho with me in case I have to change a tire in the rain. I have a couple of pairs of gloves because the flat tire you're going to be taking off your vehicle is going to be dirty. Gloves with grippers on the palms and fingers can also give you more grip when loosening and tightening lug nuts. I also bring a can of Fix-A-Flat as a last resort. Fix-A-Flat can help seal a small leak or a hole and add air to the tire at the same time. And you should always have an owner's manual in your vehicle because this manual has instructions on how to change your tire and how to use your jack. And it shows you where your safe jack points are underneath your vehicle. And if you don't have one, you can usually search for your owner's manual online on your phone, and they're usually available there for reference. Something you can do that can help prevent tire problems down the road, literally, is to make it a habit to periodically check the air pressure in your tires. You can start by visually checking your tires for obvious damage or low pressure when walking to your vehicle before driving away. Once a month or as often as you think about it, use a tire gauge or your TPMS system to check the air pressure in your tires. TPMS stands for Tire Pressure Monitoring System and most newer vehicles would have this. With a press of a button, you can see what the tire pressure is in each of your tires. Before a road trip of any length, make sure you check the air pressure and condition of all your tires, including your spare. A flat spare or one with very low air won't do you any good. Check your spare tire at least once every six months. You want to make sure you have a working jack and jack handle. I've known of a few cases where people went to change their tire, usually in an older vehicle, and they didn't have a working jack, or the jack handle was missing. And something that can help you if you're out on the road and have a small leak in a tire is a portable air compressor. With that, you can sometimes put enough air in a tire to get down the road to a place to actually get your tire repaired. Thanks for watching. And make sure that you comment down below if you've been in this situation and if this has been helpful to you, if you would also share this video to help save other people's lives and to help them out, that would be great. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.